Hello everyone, welcome back to a new video and today we have the Samsung A11 info review. In this video we are going to do an unboxing of the Samsung A11 and we are also going to do a review, a full review of this phone. In the review we are going to test the performance, the camera, the display quality, the sound quality and everything else. So stick with it, hope you guys will enjoy this video and let's get into it. The Samsung Galaxy A11 comes in a in a box, just like every other Samsung phone. Since this is not a uh, flagship phone, you're not going to get a, a premium package or anything similar to a premium package. This is meant for a budget phone for people who are not willing to spend too much money and uh, they just want to have a phone just for everyday use and uh, to perform their everyday normal task. So I have the 32 gigabyte version right here and it has a 3 gigabyte of RAM. There is another version which is a 32 gigabyte, but that one has a 2 gigabyte of RAM. So you might want to choose carefully which one is the most suitable for you when you're buying this phone. Let's open up the package right now. So as every other Samsung phone, you get the phone, the phone is covered with a um, plastic film and uh, this is just to protect the phone and on top of that it just says some of the main features of this phone. So as you can see it says it has infinity O display, it has a triple camera system and it has a fingerprint scanner. Inside the box you have your user manual but no one actually reads read this. I'm gonna put that one aside. So on this phone you get a uh, earphone which is magnificent but one thing that is not something they actually appreciate is that this earphone they're not um, the quality of this earphone will not be as great as uh, as every other earphone but not also but not only that also as you can see this earphone will not be suitable for everyone since uh, let's open this up for you and show you guys so as you can see right here the shape of this earphone um, is pretty large and some people might find this um, a, bit, a bit too big for their ear as, as different people have different size ear so in my case I don't think I'm going to like this earphone and I'm not going to use this for my everyday use I'm just going to buy a new pair of earphones and use those ones instead then you're provided with a FC charger right here and that is great especially for a Phone at this price point um, you're not going to be expecting a type-c charger then you have your sim card ejector right there so you can use this to eject your sim card from the phone and then you have your power brick and this is a fast charger as you can see and it supports up to 15 watts charging which is great especially for a budget point uh, for especially for a budget phone uh, this is awesome and uh, me personally, I'm, I'm a big fan for, for a fast charger as I use my phone every day and uh, I, mostly, I mostly rely on my phone to achieve my daily task. So this is, this is a thumbs up from my side. I have the white color right here. Externally on the phone, um, you have your power button right here. Then you have your volume button right there. So this is all on the right hand side of the phone. Then on the left side, you have your SIM card tray. Then on the left side, you have your SIM card tray and there's no other button there. One thing to, to notice is that there is no PXB button on this phone, which some people may find it useful as uh, most of you will confuse the PXB button with the power button. So you might keep pressing the PXB, PXB button, uh, confusing it and by thinking that it's the power button. This is a very, very good news for most of you guys. Especially because this one still has a headphone jack and it's not at the bottom of the phone but it's, it's on the top. As uh, whenever you listen to music and you have your headphone plugged in, you're not going to put your phone upside down but you're going to leave it like this. So this is the natural position in which uh, most of you will leave your phone. So your headphone jack will just come up directly from there. And that is a good news for most of you guys. And on the bottom of the phone you have your Type-C charging port, you have your speakers and uh, you have a microphone. On the rear of the phone you have uh, your triple camera system. 
then you have your fingerprint reader to unlock the phone by micro click whoa this is a very very beautiful display right there as you can see the wallpaper is also very very beautiful right there on the background and the colors are popping the punch hole is right on the top left corner of the phone and it blends in with the uh, notification bar so this is what makes it le le uh, less distracting one thing which I forgot to mention is that the front of the phone is glass and the back of the phone is plastic also the frame of the phone is plastic therefore if you take this phone out quite often um, I would recommend that you use a, a protective case also a protective screen protector to protect the phone since the phone does not have any uh, Gorilla Glass certification <laughs> okay sorry about that I just like to play around with the logo a bit and it's quite fun Samsung Galaxy A11 runs on the latest version of Android 10 and it has the latest security patch and on top of that it runs Samsung's own uh, One UI Core 2.0 CPU of this phone is powered by an octa-core processor Snapdragon 625 so it is an old processor therefore if you're using it for heavy gaming or heavy tasks or if you're trying to run an uh, application which demands a lot of power uh, this phone is not going to handle that very well the display is a very beautiful 6.4 inch TFT display with a resolution of 720 by 1560. One thing to notice is that the, uh, the pixel density is low and it's only as 268 ppi. So that is very very low compared to every other phone. Therefore if you get too close to the phone you'll be able to notice all the pixels on the phone. So that might be a, a drawback for most of you guys as you want, as you want a lot of sharpness on, your, uh, on the video or picture which you're viewing or, or on your phone in general. There, is a, there might be drawback. Now let's play a video on YouTube and uh, we're going to test out the quality and the, the resolution which this phone can take up to. On the video right now, um, so the quality, quality in the video right now, the quality that I can choose is only 720p, so that's the max resolution on this phone, and you cannot watch any content at 1080p full HD. That might be a drawback for most of you guys as you know that on a 1080p video you get slightly more details or yeah and the, the video will be much clearer and compared to the 720p and this year but as soon as i long pressed or if i double pressed um i don't know why but somehow the earbud and the phone took me to, to the phone call so he asked me from which sim card i want to call from and that was just great one thing they're noticing right now is the sound quality is very very good on this phone i mean it's, it's just amazing I'm enjoying this. I'm enjoying listening to my own voice on this video. So the sound quality on this phone is very, very good. And uh, this, the Samsung Galaxy A11 has a loudspeaker that makes it even, even, even better on sound, in terms of sound quality. And uh, the sound that comes out from the speaker is crisp, uh, it's clear, and it's nice to listen to, and it's very, very loud. Let me put it this way: you can compare the sound quality from this phone to a mid-range or to a high-end phone. How about that? That was the the uh, resolution and the video quality test and the screen quality test on this phone as you guys saw it it is a very very uh, good display however um, there there will be lots of details lacking on this phone and on the display of this phone uh, as it does not have a high density ppi and uh, the resolution max out at 720p unfortunately but apart from that this the, the sound quality is amazing and astonishing and it's just it's just enjoyable to listen to so that is something that, that you're getting um, on this phone now let's check out the performance of this phone and let's see how well the Snapdragon 625 handles uh, high-end games such as Call of Duty Mobile. I'm gonna play the game on this phone and uh, I'm, gonna play, I'm just gonna show you guys a short clip and I'm gonna just show you guys the highlights throughout the video um, of, uh, of, of, of the gameplay so, so you guys can know how well the game is performing and how well uh, the, this phone handles the game. But I'm gonna do a separate video for the gameplay on this phone so you guys can go check that one out I'm gonna leave the links in the description down below so you guys can go check the full review of the gameplay in that video and on that video I'm going to test out the frame per second that, that the game will be running on on this phone so if you're a person who likes to game on the on the phone and who wants to get this phone for gaming don't don't forget to check that video out and uh, now let's jump into the gameplay one thing to notice right now is the sound quality um, of this phone awesome. and uh, even 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 for gaming the sound quality is just very very good
One thing to notice right now is that the game is lagging quite a bit. And I'm really enjoying the sound quality. I mean, even if you're not using headphone, you're still gonna hear the enemy footstep on this phone. And the speaker is just amazing. Whoops. Let me show you the settings um, on the game. If you go into settings on the, on the Samsung Galaxy A11 and go to audio and graphic, as you can see, the graphic is set to low by default, and uh, you can set that up to medium if you wanna play that. And uh, but one thing to notice is that the frame will drop quite a bit if your, if your graphic is set to medium on this phone, and uh, that there is another drawback uh, in terms of performance and the gameplay on this phone. I did a um, few other gameplay and I played a few other matches after the one that I showed you guys. And on those matches, um, unfortunately, the game was lagging quite a bit, and uh, I was struggling to shoot the enemies, and uh, my reaction time was also very, very slow. And uh, if you want to get a phone for gaming, then this, this, this is not the one for you. Um, you, can, you can game on this phone, but um, high-end uh, games such as uh, Call of Duty Mobile is not going to perform so well, especially on a long-term run. Um, you're going to struggle quite a bit. So to conclude the review on the performance on this phone, the response time is slower due to the lower power chipset. Um, and since it's powered by Snapdragon 625, uh, the chipset is not able to handle the game quite well. But one thing that, you, they sh that I'm going to take with me is the sound quality of this phone. It's just amazing, even when, you, even, um, when I'm playing a game. Um, another thing um, which I realized is that um, this phone does not have a gyroscope. So if you're a person who likes to use gyroscope while playing games, um, for example, in Call of Duty, you might use the gyroscope to help you aim better. Um, but this phone does not have that, then that, that, is, that might be another drawback for you. Now that the performance is out of the way, let's check out the, the camera settings on this phone. On the back of the phone you have a triple camera system and uh, the so you have a 13 megapixel wide sensor then you have a 5 megapixel ultra wide lens then you have a 2 megapixel depth sensor so on the front you have an 8 megapixel selfie camera and in, the, in terms of recording a video the resolution that you can go up is full hd at 1080p and you can record videos on, on that settings at 30 frames per second and on the front camera you can record videos at 1080p at 30 frames per second. So front camera and rear camera video resolution is the same and also the frame per second is also the same. The battery life of this phone, you have a 4000 mAh battery and uh, that is enough for most of the people to, to go along for the entire day. So if you're a person who does not um, do heavy tasks on his or her phone, then you should be okay for 4000 mAh battery. That would be enough for you to use for the entire day. But if you're a person uh, who does a lot of gaming and heavy tasks uh, on your phone, then 4000 mAh battery might be okay, but by the time that, that you go out or by the time that you come back home, the, the battery uh, might be reduced to 10 to 50 percent. To conclude this review, I'm going to point out the main aspects and the the, the major parts of this phone which you may want to buy this phone for and also the drawbacks which you get with this phone. So the first positive aspect of this phone is the punch hole camera that you get on the top of the phone and uh, that aligns with this uh, notification bar so there is, a, uh, there is a thumbs up from my side as Samsung did a very very good job on, on, on inserting a punch hole on a budget phone and that, that is something that most of, most of the people are looking for and this is a very very good thing about this phone. The second major aspect is the Type-C charging port that you get with this phone and not many phones nowadays have a Type-C charging port especially for the, for the uh, for budget price point you're not gonna get a Type-C charging port on, on, on a lot of phones The third major aspect is the charging capabilities on this phone so you can charge this phone um, very, very fast with 15 watts fast charger and uh, if you run out of battery you can just keep recharging your phone whenever you want to and it will recharge very very fast The fourth um, major thing about this phone, and it's the most astonishing thing about this phone, are the speakers. As you guys heard it before, the speaker is very, very loud and the sound is very, very clear. That is something that I was not expecting from a budget phone like this, but as you guys saw, it just blew me away. And uh, the speaker was very, very loud and the sound quality was very, very astonishing. And it was just beautiful to listen to the music and to also to, to listen to the gameplay on this phone.
uh, now I'm going to take you guys through the drawbacks. Uh, so first of all, the first drawback is that it does not have a Bixby button. Um, for some of you guys, that, that will be a, that will not be a drawback, but you're, you're rather going to enjoy that. that. It doesn't have a Bixby button, therefore you can uh, easily use your phone and you can easily turn it on uh, without confusing the Bixby button with the power button. The second thing is the is the display quality and the, the resolution of the display. It's not as high as most of you guys will want want it to be, and also the pixel density is very very low. The third thing about this phone is the camera quality is a uh, is not as high as you'd expect it to be, and the quality is just is very very poor, um, especially in terms of uh, taking videos. Um, you, you lack a lot of the camera just lacks in a lot of details, and uh, especially if you're taking pictures in low light. Um, you're not going to get any great shot with this phone. Another drawback is that this phone does not have a gy gyroscope, therefore you're not going to you're not going to be able to watch any video uh, in virtual reality, and also in the gameplay you're not going to be able to uh, play a game using gyroscope. And that some of us just enjoy playing uh, games with gyroscope, so if the gyroscope is not present, then you cannot play certain games and you cannot watch a certain virtual reality video. And that is a very very uh, huge drawback for some of us, and for most of us, the, this is this is not a huge drawback. But you know, having a gyroscope on a phone really helps. Another thing which I forgot to mention is that the phone still has a headphone jack, so that is a thumbs up. And uh, you have a fingerprint scanner on the back of the phone, so that is another thumbs up from my side. And uh, I mean, when you're holding the phone and where the fingerprint uh, reader is placed, it's very, very comfortable to hold on to. And uh, that is natural. I mean, this is a natural position for you to unlock the phone. So you just tap quickly and the phone just unlocks. So there you have it guys, this was the full review and unboxing of Samsung Galaxy A11. If you guys enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you have any suggestion for me and any videos or any product you want me to do the review and unboxing on, don't forget to leave that on the comments down below. And uh, please subscribe, that will really, really help this channel. And that will really, really help me. My name is Ibrahim, I'm from Mobile Techland, and I'll see you guys in the next video.